Okay, let's talk about these two essays. I forgot my pen clicky thingy, so I'm going to sit behind the computer today and do this the old fashioned way. So uh, I talked with almost everyone about these two essays, and the main difference that people brought up is the style. The most obvious difference is in the correct grammar or lack thereof. So for example, the human version sometimes does not follow the rules, uh, especially in this paragraph. Edit and rewrite again and again. Like these are not complete sentences. And in the, the next paragraph, the vision thing. This is also not a complete sentence. Whereas if we look at the chat GPT version, it says, think about the pace of your writing and the emotions you want to convey. No, no, sorry, wrong one. Editing and rewriting are crucial. Do it over and over again. So this is a complete sentence. And then lastly, having a, a clear purpose is vital. This is also a complete sentence. So yes, it is true. Robots are better at grammar sometimes. But the author of the human version decided to use incorrect grammar for a reason. It's not like the author didn't know this, this was incorrect. And I would know because I am the author. So why did the author choose not to use correct grammar? There are two possible reasons. One is to illustrate this line. Every rule can be broken if you have a good and clear reason. So when the author breaks these grammar rules, there must be some kind of reason. Let's look at this one. Edit and rewrite again and again. This could be one complete sentence. It could be edit and rewrite comma again and again. That would be grammatical. But instead, the author has divided this into three sentences. Why? Well, it gives a different kind of effect. Remember that we as humans think about what we read every time we hit a period. So when we finish this part, edit and rewrite, we think, oh, yes, okay, yes, we do have to edit, we do have to rewrite. Yes, that makes sense. But then the next sentence, again. So, oh, so once is not enough, we have to do it again, okay. And then the next sentence, and again. So not just again, but also and again. So one more time. So in fact, dividing this into three sentences emphasizes the fact that you should rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. It doesn't just tell you rewrite three times. It makes you experience going back again and again as you read. And by giving you that experience, it emphasizes the point. And this sentence, why does the author choose to write it in this way? Again, if you think about, if we look at the ChatGPT version, it says, having a clear purpose is vital. Yes. But this is also repeating the first paragraph, if you have a good reason, clear and valid reasons. Like the, the essay has already mentioned this more than once. So the author at this point thinks I don't have to repeat the whole thing. I can simply remind you. And so here, instead of repeating, the author simply points to what was already mentioned. And the effect that this has on the reader is that it makes the reader think. What is the vision thing? It appeared earlier in the essay here, the vision thing. We call this a callback. It calls back to something earlier in the essay. In fact, the author here already tells you, I'm going to talk about that later. So when the author finally talks about it, 
he doesn't have to re explain the whole thing. He can just remind you, hey, I told you I would talk about this later. Well, now I'm going to talk about it. It's a more direct form of communication and it's shorter. English loves shorter sentences, usually. So that brings us to the second difference. Not just grammar, but also the style. The reason the author does not always use correct grammar is because he wants to create a kind of style. Um, now, style is more subjective. Different people will react differently to the same style. So for instance, some students, some of your classmates said that it's harder to read the human version because they have to think more about when the grammar breaks down. When the author does not use correct grammar, it's harder, it, it's unexpected for the reader. And so the reader has to spend some more energy trying to make sense of what's going on. So that's one reaction to this kind of style. But some classmates also mentioned that the style seems to be more personal, like the author is talking to you. It's more intimate. It's more like oral communication. So for example, the first sentence, good writing has no rules, not really. This is called backtracking. Uh, first, the author says something absolute, no rules, but then he backtracks. He gives you some room. OK, maybe there are some rules, but they're not really rules. He's giving back a little bit of ground. Whereas in the ChatGPT version, it simply says writing well doesn't really have strict rules. There is no back and forth. There is no uh, pretending like somebody is telling you something and then correcting himself. So the human version creates a character even though this is an informational essay, an exposition essay, it still uses a character to tell you things. For example, this, the, uh, let's see. Yeah, the second sentence. Sure, you, could, you should spell things correctly. This is, does not give you more logical information. It tells you more about the attitude of the author. He's saying, Yes, yes, this information is important, but I want to talk about something else. Whereas in ChatGPT, it simply says, but it's important to spell things correctly. There is no uh, image or feeling of a person telling you this stuff. There is no sense of the attitude of the author toward the information. Like you might think, OK, you're the author. You wrote this essay, you should agree with everything you say, right? But it's not always true. Sometimes in order to get from point A to point C, you need to pass through point B, even though you don't like point B. So the author does not always agree with everything in his or her essay. The author does not always enjoy talking about what everything that is in the essay. So using a word like sure in this way gives you a sense of which parts the author likes and which parts he doesn't like which parts he's interested in which parts he's less interested in and therefore it helps to guide you the reader and this is also something that some of you mentioned not only does the human version have a person the person isn't just talking to you the person is guiding you through the information. So by telling you this part is less important, it's saying I want to focus on something else. You should pay more attention to this other thing. Or uh, some classmates also talked about the Oscar Wilde story. Oscar Wilde once said that he spent all morning taking out a comma and all afternoon putting it back in. Whereas the chat GPT version says, Oscar Wilde shared a story about spending a lot of time deciding. OK, so immediately there's a grammar difference. The robot uses gerunds. 
动名词 ，whereas the human uses simple past tense. Right, spent. The difference is that a gerund 动名词 is describing an action, but a past tense ver a simple verb is directly telling you the action. A gerund is talking about an action. A simple verb is presenting the action to you. So a gerund is more indirect, whereas a regular simple verb is more direct. And as we saw two weeks ago, when you're telling a story, you want to use more direct language. Uh, and then another point about style that some of you mentioned. Um, the part about sentence length. The robot says. Slow the reader down by writing longer sentences, adding concrete details. Wait, hold on. That's the human version. The robot says. Uh, to slow down their reading, use longer sentences, add details and guide them toward your main point. If your goal is to give information quickly, use shorter sentences to speed up the reading process. These two sentences are equally long. Look at this. Same length. And they feel the same. Right? Subordinate clause. 不说自句. Subordinate clause. 不说自句. Imperative sentence. Imperative sentence. 其实句. These two are the exact same sentence in terms of style. But what about the human writer? Where do you want the reader to feel things? OK, so first of all, the writer is not just giving information. He's asking you the reader. And even if you don't stop to think about the answer, your mind will treat a question differently from a statement. When the robot says to slow down their reading uh, and we read the sentence, we think, OK, so uh, if I need to slow down the reading, this is how I can do it. But when you read a question, where do you want the reader to feel things? Then when you read it for one moment, you're going to think. That's a good question. Where do I want my readers to feel things? And so you will care about the answer just a little bit more. And then notice how the human writes the answer. Slow the reader down by writing longer sentences, adding concrete details and gesturing toward your theme. Long sentence. It, in fact, it's longer than the robot version. Um, it uses gerunds to create distance. It uses abstract words to talk about concrete information. Kind of ironic, you didn't fancy, right? It says add concrete details, but it uses abstract words. That's why you need to add concrete details, but it uses abstract words to talk about so the effect of reading this sentence is more like reading the AI sentence. It takes more time and energy to understand what it's trying to say, and therefore it slows you down as a reader. And if you just want to give the reader information again, OK, so if, if this is uh, the question will make you think, OK, then what should I do? Shorten your sentences, period. Speed the reader up, period. Stay out of their way, period. So when the author tells you to shorten your sentences, he uses shorter sentences. Not only is each individual sentence short, when you add it together, it's still shorter than the sentence that AI used. If you remember, Here. Yeah, it's about the same. OK, it's about the same length, um, but it uses three short sentences to really emphasize this information. Every time we hit a period, we think about what we have just read. So those are the main differences between a human writer and an AI writer when giving information. 
even when the point is information, it's not enough to present good information. You must present it in a way that the reader will find it easier to understand and easier to remember. Otherwise, there's no point in giving the information. Anybody can read Wikipedia, but not everybody can understand and remember Wikipedia. That's the difference. So when you write an exposition essay, think about that. First of all, of course, what do you want to explain? What information do you want to give? That's just the first step. Then you should think about your attitude toward this information. Do you care? Why do you care? How do you feel about this information? And use language to show the reader which parts you care about and how you feel about this information. And finally, remember to manage the relationship between you and the reader. It's not just presenting information. It's not just presenting information in a logical way. It's guiding the reader through this well presented information. It's the difference between throwing your reader into a museum and leading your reader through the museum. 把文章想成在逛博物馆，你也必须要当向导，去带领你读者去了解这些资讯。uh, and so one group also said because the author tries to guide the reader in this human version, it makes them trust the author more. When you can see some kind of person behind the words, it automatically makes you trust the information more. Of course, not always. Sometimes if you choose the wrong kind of character, uh, it can have the opposite effect. For example, if you write an essay about nuclear power, and the character that you create for the essay is a 10 year old kid who uses simple language, that may not make the reader trust you very well. Because what does a 10 year old kid know about nuclear power, right? Why should we trust this person? Uh, so when you create a character for your information, make sure that it is a suitable character. In this case, the essay is about writing English well. And so the author doesn't have to say, I am this person, I have this experience, you should trust me. The author only has to write a good essay. And as the reader reads, they will feel that this is a good essay and therefore that the reader should trust the author about writing a good English essay. Um, but if your topic is not about writing, not about language, then you will have to talk about why the reader should trust you. Maybe it's from personal experience. Maybe you spent some time learning about your topic. Um, so the reason for the trust can be subjective it can be objective, but there should be some kind of reason. Um, for exposition essays, you can write about objective knowledge information like nuclear power, war in Ukraine, that kind of thing. You can also introduce your best friend. You can talk about an important uh, situation that happened in your life. You can uh, describe your bedroom. Any kind of information uh, can be the topic for your exposition essay. So um, last time when we were talking about narrative essays, I said that sometimes the point of a narrative essay is to give information. The same is true for the exposition essay. Sometimes the point of an exposition essay is to entertain the reader. The information is not necessarily the most important point. Sometimes the key point is about making the reader feel like it's a fun essay. Like they enjoy reading it. 
So the difference between a narrative essay and an exposition essay is not a hard and fast difference. There is some gray area in between. Um, and the way that we're going to deal with this gray area in this class is if you write an essay in the middle gray area, you can only write one. So if your narrative essay is focused more on information, then your exposition essay cannot be focused on the experience. It has to be about information. And vice versa, if your exposition essay is more focused about the experience of reading your essay, then your narrative essay has to be about the story. The point is you cannot write the same essay twice. Right, I want you to try different writing strategies. Uh, same rules, choose your own topic, decide your own length, and think about the order of presentation of the information. What do you need to explain first? What do you need to explain second? This will depend on what kind of reader are you imagining? When you present information, there will always be some assumptions. You will always think that your reader already knows these things, but not yet those things. Where do you start explaining? And which parts do you not have to explain? When you explain something, this can be a bit difficult because most things just exist. Most things do not have an order to them. And yet writing is linear. It has a beginning and a middle and an end. So you have to decide what order are you going to use. If it's something that happened, then maybe you want to follow chronological order. But if you're describing something that has no time, what order will you use? Maybe if it's a space, you can go from the entrance to the exit, from outside to inside, or maybe inside to outside. If it's a thing, maybe from the top to the bottom, or from the bottom to the top, left to right, right to left. If it's a person, maybe from the outward appearance to the internal personality, or maybe you want to start with the personality and end with appearance. The uh, but if you're describing a process, I've had people write um, recipes like how to make a cake. That's also exposition. Then you, the, the order will be more obvious because it's a step by step process. But you do need some kind of order. You can't just throw all the information on the page. Uh, right. One last reminder is that chat GBT is best at writing exposition essays. It sucks at telling stories, but it's not bad at giving information. Therefore, it, it will be a little more challenging for you to write a better essay than ChatGPT that gives information. If you ask ChatGPT for help in writing your essay, make sure that the it is only the starting point the end result must be significantly better than the starting point. So it's not just changing out a few words. Sometimes you will really need to sit down and think what perspective jiaodu, am I writing this essay from? How do I feel about this information? Which parts do I really want to make my reader care about? Uh, and then there's also all of the advice in this essay that I gave you. OK, questions about exposition essays. Um, the other two essays will also be exposition essays, but will be specific kinds of exposition. After the midterm, we were going we're going to write a cause effect essay. And then we're going to write a comparison contrast essay. Both are specific ways of giving information. For this essay, 
you can use any kind of strategy to give information, including cause effect or comparison contrast. Uh, if you choose one of those two, you're going to end up writing two cause effect essays or two comparison contrast essays, but that's your choice. Um, so next week is a holiday. But before that, you guys have homework already, right? Where is it? Today is October 2nd. Yes, your narrative essay draft is due by midnight tonight. If you have not yet submitted your essay, please do so. Uh, you can only submit PDF files, so please save as PDF. Uh, please double space, and that way I have space to mark your essays. And as always, beware the Google Docs error. Make sure that your essay does not look like this. So uh, by midnight tonight, you have to submit this. Next week is a holiday, no class. The following week, um, before next class, I will finish marking all of your essays, and then I will upload them to this, no, where is it here? This Google Drive folder. After I finished uploading all the essays, I will write a letter to all of you telling you I finished, uh, and so, before next class, please go and download your essay, look at what I have written, and prepare to ask any questions that you have. Next class will be another one-on-one -on -one conference, and we will look at your essay together. And you can ask me questions, and I can explain some of the things I, I wrote on your essay. I'm going to mark it by hand using an e-pen. So uh, it will give you a chance to practice reading somebody's handwriting. Uh, let's see, I think there's one more thing to say, right? Which is, is yeah, this Friday, third and fourth period, EE501, we're watching a movie. So if you have time, please come. If you don't have time, uh, sorry for your loss about not watching a movie with us. OK, do you have questions about anything? OK, so. It's too early to let you go. So for the next 15 minutes, this is your time to finish writing your narrative essay or begin thinking about your exposition essay. And if you have questions, I will be in the front. You can come and ask me questions.